Welcome to the Pivot Point Podcast. I'm Ronnie Tyler. And my name is Lamar Tyler, and we are the founders of Traffic, Sales, and Profit. We are the premier destination for entrepreneurs to learn how to grow and scale their companies. But we're here today to talk about pivots. Ronnie, have, have we had to make drastic pivots? Yes. Or just minor pivots? Have we made yes. any pivots? We've made a lot of pivots. Now, some pivots are strategic. We planned them out. And some pivots happen in the moment, right? Name one. Name one. Which one? Name one. <laughs> Like, am I lying? Okay. I ain't heard your name one yet. Name one. Okay. This so, is sound like podcast fluff. Lamar, you are in so much trouble. You're going to have to pivot when you get home tonight. For real. Okay. So let's just talk about that pivot. But anyway, okay. So pivoting is when you maybe you change your business, right? We used to own Black and Mary with kids. Remember that? Remember that company, Lamar? Okay. Now we have traffic, sales, and profit. So that's a pivot. Okay. And it was not and it was not a slow pivot. It was something that we thought about for a year or two before you actually jumped into coaching and consulting entrepreneurs, but it was something that was on your heart to do, but it wasn't like, oh, we're going we're just going to do it to wake up and do it tomorrow. So a pivot can be slow, a pivot can be fast. Yeah. A pivot can be calculated. Does you telling me? Yes. You want to know a fast pivot? I'm afraid to ask. Me asking you to marry me. That was a fast pivot. <laughs> I was at the club one day. The next day I was married. Okay. Okay. What? I'm joking. Y'all I'm joking. It's a joke. He it's really is going to have to pivot tonight. <laughs> On the way home in the car. Anyway, but um, fast pivot. when the day before our conference in June, we were notified that Magic Johnson wasn't coming and the pivot was Damon John. There you go. That's a good one. I forgot right? about that. Be so, so many, actually so many pivots. That sometimes I forget, but guess what? That's part of entrepreneurship. Right? It is, it is. And that's what we're talking about again today. And I'm excited because we got a great couple that we're going to talk about it with. But before they come on, I want to ask you what percentage of entrepreneurs, business owners in the United States are actually couples? What would you say? 10. I'll let you know in a little bit. <laughs> I can't confirm nor deny, but we'll let you know in a minute. We'll come back with that and the I answer, think I right? Got it right? Y'all drop your answers in the comments. I want to know what you think. But while y'all are doing that, I want to let you know today we're joined by an awesome couple. They are the co founders of Speak Your Way to Cash. You've seen them online, you've seen them conferences, mm -hmm. you've seen challenges, you've seen tours. What else you seen? You've seen them. Podcasts. Yes. Singing and Anguilla? I don't know. Right, right. Singing at your local resorts, right? They do it all. And this is a perfect time to cut the camera over to Chris and Ashley Kirkwood. <laughs> what's going on, y'all? How y'all doing? Good. Yeah, what's good. going on? All right. that was Y'all probably never got an introduction like that. Uh, no. <laughs> never. Definitely the first. Chris, he going to get a copy like, I never want another one. That was disgusting with Lamar's introduction off. of me. <laughs> but thank y'all for coming, right, to the uh, uh, pit pivot point and we're talking about pivots and I think uh as couples right not only do you have pivots you got to make around the business you got pivots you have to make personally when you're doing business together right it's pivots that you make in a relationship yeah. that can impact the business and things in the business can impact you know the relationship and you you know we've been as we have these conversations I suppose we find out it's like pivots inside of the pivots sometimes mm -hmm. right um but I want to know more about y'all's story like the background of you two. Uh, should we start with the marriage background? Yeah. Let's start with that. How did y'all meet? <laughs> two versions. <laughs> <laughs> Three. Let's go. Your version. Third is the oh, truth. Oh, my version first. So <laughs> your version. I'll, I'll your version first, truth. and I'll, I'll tell you the truth. <laughs> no, no. So we, we were in grammar school together. Grammar school, junior high, high school. And so we knew each other. We wrote the same book. It's bus in high school. And he says he didn't like me in high school. Um, but he didn't mm. know me because he wasn't invited to my sweet 16. I do remember that because I would remember if he was there. And we were we did not interact, though, until college. You said you remember that he was there? Or I remember wasn't? that he wasn't there. I thought you said remember he was there. I thought he just no. crashed that joint. I was like, <laughs> no. what kind of dude is this? It was very, you know, I've been making offers since then because I remember I would, like, go to people's door, like, outside of their class, like, I need little Tommy to come out. Uh, he needs to go to the principal's office and be like, congratulations, you've been invited to my Sweet 16. <laughs> oh hey, my so wait, wait, wait. You know, random thing. I actually remember this happening. It's <laughs> cool. <laughs> and so these are like beautiful invites. My mom handmade them. Like we went all out. Like I love events. So 
that I remember he was not there, but he was very quiet in school. And I remember him being like very holy and Christian. Like that was his reputation in school. So very good, re positive reputation. But in college, I went to University of Illinois, Urbana-Champaign. That's where I graduated from. But I got, this is bad, but I got, <laughs> I got in a big fight my senior year of college. And my parents were like, look, if you're going to stay down there. What do you mean you got into a big fight? Physical like fight. Are you, yeah, like no, argument? it was like a physical Fisticuffs. fight. Oh like, it, like nothing, yeah, like nothing I got if you jumped, Hands so. were thrown. <laughs> hands were thrown. It was out of nowhere. And it was, it was for such a bad reason. Like my best friend, um, <laughs> my best friend was a dancer. It was this guy. And this group of girls really liked him. And he didn't want to be bothered. So he grabs me and like starts dancing with me. And he tells them, hey, Ashley's my new girlfriend. But it was a lie. He didn't even, like we were, yeah. I don't even think the guy actually, you know, dates girls. You know what I mean? So this is they, like a movie. Yeah. It's like some so forbidden they, dance meets <laughs> you got soul meets. <laughs> this yeah, is wild. Like, I never heard this before. It was just like I, I don't know what. Like yeah, it was crazy. So we, I walk out of the club. And the girls, and I said I wasn't gonna go to the club that night. Lord, that's why I shouldn't have went to the club. So I walk out and the girls are like, you, you think you're better than us? And they were really big, large, just huge girls. I mean, size, they had me on the size. And they just start throwing like hands and hitting me and I'm like trying to hit back. And then one of my girlfriends, very small girl, jumps in, saves the day. She was small, but like a ninja. Mm -hmm. And then I get out of there <laughs> and the cops, one of my friends ran. My mom said I should have never talked to her again. So one of my friends ran. The other girls jumped in. So I got out of there. Totally got jumped. I go to the police thinking they're going to help. And they're like, ma'am, y'all both are fighting. So you're both in trouble. And I'm like, I am the victim. Mm -hmm. So after that, I decided to um, finish my last semester at... Um, in Chicago, UIC Chicago, and I can still get my degree from University of Illinois in Champaign um, after doing the graduation speech at U of I Champaign at black graduation. I was explaining that to your team that at U of I, there was like a black equivalent to everything. I've <laughs> so, heard, I've heard at, yes. the, at the the white institutions, yeah. they have like black graduation. Like that black is, homecoming queen. I was black homecoming queen one wild, year. Wild. Then we had yeah, black graduation. Yeah. Then we had a black house. It was like everyone else had their own house. Like, yeah, it was great. It was amazing. Shout out to U of I, woo woo, I-L-L. So all that happens, I go to Chicago to finish my last semester. I'm walking around. I don't know where anything is or anything is. And I remembered seeing Chris and I was like, oh, we went to high school together. And I think at the time I'd asked his friend to show me around, but I don't know what happened. I think Chris like told him not to show me around. He was going to show me around. Okay. So then <laughs> after that, we were just together every day. And then we got engaged six months later. And then we were married, I think less than eight months later. And we've been together for 12 years. I love it. Mr. Show You Around. Yeah. <laughs> That's your new nigga. <laughs> That's like the legit story. Yeah. Part of, most, most of that's true. <laughs> most of that's true. <laughs> what parts aren't, Chris? I mean, you sound like you want to punch a few holes in the Yeah, thing. we didn't go to the same grammar school. We did. <laughs> but we did ride the same bus. We went to the same uh, junior high school. Now, this whole party situation, we didn't talk at all. <laughs> she led y'all to believe, like, I just didn't get invited. I thought you get invited. She's we like, didn't, we didn't have like, a... He's like, that kid with the Bible. You make the cut. Ronnie, that kid with the Bible, he's Ronnie, not coming we to the didn't have We, a, we didn't run in the same circle. We didn't have a conversation until college. You would not mm -hmm. We never talked. Right, yeah. So, so let me ask cool. you this, Chris. In college... When she needed a tour, did you did you step in and say like, "Yo, I got this"? Oh yeah, this? That, that's that's a hundred percent true. Okay, we're in a student center. A uh, buddy of mine who was also an alpha. That's how she recognized him because uh, she was involved with the pageants at U of I. So UIC, she uh, shows up on campus. I'm hanging out with friends. We're kind of like in a setting similar to this, and uh, she's walking down the hall and she speaks to my friend, and she's like, "You know, hey, what's up? Thank you for showing me around." And I, I turned, look at him, was like. I got it, bro. And you know, you know, guys, we got code, right? We got code. He knew, he was like, say less, step back. And I was like, I'll show you around campus from here on out. So uh, we recognized each here other. Uh, so I, we started. Here on out, literally forever. Here on out. <laughs> here on out. So we, so we leave yep. this, my cold, barren hands. So we started hanging out. Uh, I invited her to come uh, to the gym. We get, we get to the gym and we start talking just about family. We find out that we have so many similarities and mind you we had never talked before although we mm -hmm. live you know minutes away from each other went to the same school systems there were so many kids at our school that we never had a conversation we found out that both of her parents uh both our parents are pastors and then she told me how close she was with her dad and me being very family oriented she said that she hadn't spoken with her dad because they were on bad terms 
And I, I stopped the conversation. We had an argument. My dad's going to watch this like, I'm going to say, turns. your dad going to watch this be like, <laughs> hey. He's like, I got my own version right. of whatever, <laughs> whatever the case was, whatever the case was, uh, her, she, she and her dad hadn't had, had a conversation in a while, which was longer than normal. And I was like, uh, you, you probably wrong. You got to call your dad and apologize. And she looks at me like, excuse me? I was like, yeah, you were wrong. Like, call your dad. Your dad is going to like this part. He's like, he, he's That's like, this part like, is not at all. <laughs> then he's like, hold on, let me, let, me, yeah. let me let that play. Yeah, and she she actually called her dad. Yeah, I did. And apologized. And then we carried on a conversation. We end up going out to dinner that, uh, that night. Oh, yeah, because I was, yeah, because my dad wanted to talk. He wanted to learn more about the police thing, like why we got jumped and all that. But I was afraid my dad would learn that I had actually gotten arrested in college. So I wouldn't let him talk to the police on my back. <laughs> Oh, uh, so, that's, so, so I was wrong. Hold she on. was lying. Hold on. Excuse me. From excuse criminals. Me. <laughs> Let's go. Let's go. Hold on. We, we try to, to, to brush over that part. Lots uh, of pivots. Lots of pivots. Lots of pivots. So you were involved with the law before you could. <laughs> before I was a lawyer. Which is interesting because I had to go through this two-year background check before I became a lawyer. And they had to ask me about everything. And what helped me to get past it was being like, oh, that was when I was Ashley Williams. But I'm married to a pastor now. <laughs> I'm actually Chris Kirkland. cleaned up she your was, record. Like, she I was have using giving my life to the Lord. <laughs> Check him out. And they checked his record too. They were like, this guy's clean. <laughs> they were like, this lady may have really checked. That's why we got married so quick. I didn't find out until <laughs> years later <laughs> about all these records. That was her plan. I didn't, I didn't know. That is not why so I was in the wrong. So my dad was like, why can't I come down there? My dad's very like, they heard my baby. I'm going down there. I'm talking to the police myself. I'm like, wow. Nah. <laughs> I don't don't do talk. it. Talking to him too much. <laughs> so I was in the wrong. Yeah, but yeah. I love that he told me that I was in the wrong. You know, instead of just being like, whatever. You know, he really cared, and that's that's always been his character. It's like calm, even though I've always been a little bit more chaotic. Like he's always been very calm. Okay, that's good. Now I know what what Ronnie and I we had. You know, we didn't just jump straight into the business, right? We had separate careers. Mm -hmm. uh, Ronnie, what were you doing? I was a project manager for IBM for. A long time. Yep, long time. Long, long, time. long time. And um, you know, I worked IT background. You guys, same type of thing, right? You had careers before you started this business together. Yep. Tell me about what you did. So I actually did sales, um, inside sales consulting, and then I did digital marketing consulting for tech companies. And then after that, I went into law school and um, was a trial lawyer for a large law firm for several years. And I, um, I really enjoyed that. And then I also started a law firm as my first business. Yeah, and I was in education. I was a college and career coach, uh, working with families to uh, to help family students and uh, teachers that serve those students, helping them to uh, to get into post secondary pathways. So college, four year, two year, uh, trade pro trade school programs, anything that uh, that related to what they were going to do after high school. That's what I supported them with. And I was a director of a after school uh, program uh, for a while. So I worked at a lot of nonprofits, but in the same industry. I love it. And, and how did y'all come from that into actually working together? Well, speak your way to cash, the first <laughs> business y'all did together or? No. no. So, well, I think the first, I don't know if it'd be called business, but the first thing we did together was ministry. So we both, Chris was the assistant pastor at a church. And I feel like they gave me, <laughs> I shouldn't say it like that, but I feel like they gave me a title because like he had a title, but like they had me <laughs> <laughs> like at his church. What was I, a minister? Or an elder or something? Yeah, it went from minister to, to elder. You were you were ordained to elder uh, at a different. Yeah. A different so church. so they had uh, we were both in ministry, but I really just supported Chris in ministry. So Chris okay. led the um, the choir, so I would sing in the choir. Chris worked with the youth, so I worked with the youth. Chris wanted to do something at the church, so I was like, all right, cool, let's do something at the church. And that was kind of when we learned our um, styles because. With the choir, Chris takes his leadership roles very, very seriously. And so I would come to rehearsal and not kind of be as prepared as the other people, which would set a bad example for the other members. <laughs> horrible example. <laughs> <laughs> so that horrible. Was I heard word. horrible today two times in one day. Lamar, it was so horrible. bad, I had to sit her down. I said, look, you either going to be right or you got to leave. But like, I, you, wow. you get kicked out the choir. Wow. Yeah, but I didn't want to be kicked out of the choir because I was like, it was well, kicked out the choir by your husband. What am I gonna do? Yeah. By your husband. That's that's a bad thing. And look. I could sing. It was just I didn't like memorizing all the lyrics because it just did. <laughs> was, she didn't want to rehearse. <laughs> she, didn't she was like Alan Iverson it. in here. Yeah, I just wanted to call natural talents. So that wasn't good. And then we um we started a nonprofit. That was when we first worked together and found like harmony because he loved working with the youth and I we would, he would come home and say like, hey, you know, I'm working with these kids. They're about to go to these colleges. 
And I would always tell him if they go to a college that's low rank, they're not going to make as much money because of the networks. And just look at the average salaries. Your ranking determines your salary. Particularly, we learned that in law. Mm -hmm. So my first law school was ranked, you know, bottom 20 law school, um, average salary 60 grand. Then I transferred to Northwestern, average salary 160 grand. We didn't know this. When we discovered it, Chris was still in education. And I was like, yo, your students need to be going for high rank schools so that they can have high rank networks, better internships, which lead to better jobs. And he was just like, okay, maybe we could do something around that. So our first nonprofit, the Kirkwood Foundation, showed high school students how to start, how to land six figure jobs within three years of college graduation. So we would um, take them to like Google and different companies. We took them to Curl Mix. Mm -hmm. That was one of the companies we took our nonprofit to. They loved that because it was the only company where they saw representation. Right. Um, and we did it for three years on the west side of Chicago. We raised money for it. We self-funded. But we worked, I think we worked really well in the nonprofit together. Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. We, yeah. we did. We, I think that was the first time we figured out what our, our professional skill sets were um, amongst each other. Because we mm-hmm. go to work and we did our thing, but it's different when you come home. Yeah. You kind of turn that part of your brain or that part of your life off oftentimes. Right. But when we did it together, it was like, okay, you are super administrative, organized, and can negotiate, you know, different terms. Me, I'm service, one-to-one, small group. And so we were, we were able to implement those. So the, it's really, really important for spouses that work together to be able to leverage each other's strengths mm-hmm. and not to try to force the other spouse to kind of do the same thing that you're doing or whatever. So how important is that, that you all really like kind of learn, like this is how Chris is, this is how Ashley is, and then also be able to kind of respect that in, in the work environment? Really important. I feel like we had a conversation that was really life changing um, for me, Ronnie, at like a funnel hacking live event. And I had come to you and we had just had some argument about about roles. And you were just like, you can't let you can't you can't make him you. It'll ruin him and both of you. And then inevitably the business. And I think just hearing someone else say that really um, it's like you you should have known that logically. But hearing it from someone who is doing really well that you respect in business it just really helped me and so now we had to learn two things what were our skills and then also what was our individual pace right because my pace is just like so fast like i'm just like all right idea to execution in a couple days you know like how fast can we get it done and chris is like well no we need to sit down we need to plan it out we need to think it through and honestly in business there are sometimes when you have to move at the speed of light. And there are some times when you do need to slow down because you'll make such big mistakes. And I have moved too fast in business and lost money. And then sometimes I have to tell Chris, like, no, we have to move faster so we don't lose an opportunity. Um, And Mm. I think just having two people to to walk that through is really important. But we've had a lot of issues with that, especially in the beginning. I'm glad we worked together in ministry and in nonprofit space because we knew we could do it. We just had to figure out how it worked in for-profit business. Right, right. And so when we first met you, y'all, you were just about to go through a major pivot in your business. Like when you first came to TSP, and I think you still had your law firm, but um, Speak Your Way to Cash was really, really pulling, pulling, pulling on you. So talk to us about that pivot and um, yeah, how, that, how did that go for you? And what, what made you actually pivot and, 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 and say, I'm going to do the Speak Your Way to Cash thing and focus everything on that? Yeah, that was really tough because that was probably the only decision I can think of in business where me and Chris weren't in total agreement Mm -hmm. Um, because my law firm, it just it was just like even now, now that we've grown the business um, to multiple million dollars on this side, I've even thought about like, how do we re revamp it because it was running without me. And it was (laughs) now looking back so much easier to run than this business. Um, what really made me do it was I actually, I talked to Chris about it a lot of different times. We tried to sell it to the associate that I was working with at the time and she wouldn't buy it. And I knew that I personally felt uniquely called and assigned to do speak your way to cash. I had prayed about it and I prayed this prayer that was like, okay, Lord, I can't, I can't, I can't not show up for my clients because I really care about everything I do in law and I'm really passionate about it. And so I was like, well, if it's not for me to do, then you got to have them fire me. And I'd never been fired by clients. And so within a day, I got all all of my clients, which are paying five to 20 K a month, sent me emails that were like, all right, we need to pause our contracts. And I'm just like, whoa, I should have prayed a different prayer. Like, <laughs> I, I should have prayed that they find me a buyer for 20 million dollars. Yes, like, right? like I didn't pray the right prayer on that, but like. 
when that happened, I was like, okay, this is too much to be a coincidence. Decor Davis called me and was like, hey, someone told me to call you and just say like, as soon as you just like focus on speaking ready cash, it's gonna do over a million dollars that same year. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is cool. So I had gotten a lot of confirmation and then eventually Chris was like, okay, well, if we're gonna do this, then I'm o I'm okay with it. You know, we can we can do it. But we kept our law firm open and Speak Your Way to Cash has been its institutional client, which has saved us, man, I can't even tell you fifty, sixty thousand dollars in legal expenses. Wow. Um, just by having our own law firm. So almost like what Ace talks about, right. like that firm has been incredible because I can get law at cost. Um, and so we've been thinking about how we can do that for other companies, but we have to shut it down because I just at the time, I saw a post from Lamar that was like, you can run one seven figure business if you weren't running two six figure businesses. And at the time, both of them were teetering right around half a million dollars. And I even tried to use that to get in the collaborative. I was like, look, you know, <laughs> if you add it up and take away the one. You would not get the first person. <laughs> I, was, I was like, I have a seven figure business. People be like, if you take my revenue, you add my salary at my nine to five. Yeah. And include <laughs> my pension. Together, I have a million dollars, seven figures. I really did. But that message of focus, like seeing that post, like that was all around, all this stuff was happening. I was like, this is a sign. And yeah. so I, I shut it down. Hey, I, can I ask, Chris, how did you feel at this point? You know what? I had, I felt like we had finally found a formula that was working for us, mm. right? Because uh, we had come up with the idea for the firm to service our clients together. We were like on a retreat and we were trying to think of creative ways to make money. And I was like, we got it. And so that was working really well. And I didn't see a path beyond that. And that's where, that's where coaching and, you know, uh, putting yourself in other communities where people are thinking not necessarily bigger than you, but they're thinking differently than you. Yeah. And you're, you're, you're getting new ideas. She was doing that. I wasn't. And so yeah. because I couldn't mm. see that, mm. all I can think about is this is working. Why would we change it? But the moment she actually shared with me a way forward, I was like, OK, well, let's lay it out. And we were, I'm big on lists. We made our list. And I was like, OK, well, the, the firm and the uh, speaking business doing about the same. So at this point, what do we have to lose? And uh, we took the risk on ourselves. You know, that's so good. That's one of the reasons when we first started um, TSP Mastermind and the collaborative, right, the, the 12-month coaching programs, uh, Ryan and I sat down and said, we want to do it so that a couple can come in together under one business for that exact reason. Yeah. Because when one person is in a certain environment and the other person is not, right, it's easily for a disconnect to form, like you said, right, because um, basically you're going through uh, evolution. Yeah. Yeah. Like when you get around like-minded people, mm -hmm. and most time in life, we're not really around like-minded people, mm -hmm. right? Especially if you're an achiever, if you're successful, if you, you want to work towards success, you're willing to do the things, all, those, all that type of stuff. So when we get around those people, we start to evolve. And if we have a partner or a spouse that's not with us there, it's a tricky part when one of you starts to evolve in a different way mm -hmm. than the other, right? You yeah. can grow apart. Like yeah. when I yes. went to law school, I was around all of my law friends and that's all we talked about. And I would come home and Chris would be like, this is all you talk about. And I was like, yes, like <laughs> this is all I talk about. <laughs> like I am in law school, it is hard. We focus on this. And we started growing apart. And I think it really could have ruined our marriage. Like every time I can, I want Chris to be with me in the same environment, hearing the same things. I want to know what he's listening to. I want to hear what he's hearing because We've, we know what it feels like to have a marriage and you're together, but you're mentally apart. Mm. And that's really, really dangerous. And we saw it in law. And I think because we saw it in law, um, when it happened in business, we were like, okay, no. We can recognize and it quicker. We can recognize it quicker. We're yeah. like, nah, okay, we both gonna get in this mastermind. We're both gonna do this. We're both gonna read these books. We're both gonna go to these sessions. Um, and Chris just needed to hear, like, it was good for him to see other marriages and other men that weren't like, I don't know the word for it, but that weren't um, disrespectful or like posing mm -hmm. um, or like super flashy. It's just like, cause his character really doesn't align with that. So it's like, it's good for him to be around guys who are also like-minded, who just love their partners and want to do well for their business, but they're not trying to hurt anybody. Cause mm -hmm. also we're from a church background. So you know, you hear yeah. people with money are trying to hurt people. Um, and so it's good for us to be in that environment together so that we don't yeah. grow apart. You know, when I, one, one of the things I thought was very interesting is, you know, it was a, a pivotal time for you all as far as making that decision to focus on Speak Your Way to Cash, right? Um, your um, law firm was shutting down or at least 
scaling way, way back, yeah. right, way down to maybe you, you being the only client yep. for it, right? And yet you still chose to invest, right? And so talk yeah. to me about like how the investment, particularly in like TSP, how that helped you and why, how could you like, I guess, recommend that to other people? Because I know a lot of times when people are at a certain point, they want to pull back yeah. Yeah. and kind of do it on their own. Yeah. And so like, how was that for you? You know, I just, again, I like to move fast. So mm -hmm. because I like to move fast, that means I always have to get the information. We had a rule in law that was like, if you had to, if it took you more than two hours to figure it out, call help. Mm. Like that was the rule in law. So like, and, and they did that because you bill by the hour and the minute. And so if you're wasting minutes, you're wasting other people's time. And so I still think of it the same way. If I waste time, I'm wasting my client's time. I'm wasting my future's time. So for me, um, even when I first started my business and didn't make any money, I hired this one lady, she just had something on the internet. I was like, all right, cool, I'm gonna do that call to figure out this one little thing on Instagram. And that was good, you know? And so I've, it's always paid off for me investing, whether I learn from the person or not. And so with TSP, I went to an event in 2018, maybe? Maybe it was earlier, I think it was 2018. And I, um, yeah, 2019, I think, it was 2019. And I saw so many couples working together. And I'm recalling Chris like crying. I was like, babe, we're gonna work together. I just met Sharice. She works with her husband. Kim and Tim work with her husband. This is gonna be us. I knew none They're of these all people. Millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, why are you crying? Like, just call me yeah. back. Cause again, he didn't come. Chris, like, right. these, these people mean nothing to me. These yes. names mean nothing I'm like, to me. I'm and in I've classroom. never been at an I'm enrollment event. So you're feeling all the feels. I was like, oh my God, people are spending money. I'm gonna spend money too. Yeah. And he's just like, and I will, I will never forget, like I went to the back table, I was gonna sign up. I was like, Chris, can I sign up? It's $15,000. And then I went to the back table and um, I think April was there or something yeah, and she April, walked yeah. by, she was all confident. She was like, $15,000, you probably waste that money. Just pay the people. And I'm like, whoa, okay, this lady's intense. <laughs> so then she walks by, then I see Ronnie and then Ronnie's like, are you coming? And I'm like, mm -hmm. she's like, mm. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, like, what am I doing? And so I ended up like joining. I went to the welcome dinner and then I like punked out or something. I think something happened. And the next year I saw all these other people who joined and they were all rich. And I was like, <laughs> oh my gosh, this was stupid. Like I should have just paid 15 grand because then I ended up having to pay way more. And I'm just like, wow, that's my fault. Because there was no real reason for me not to. Chris was kind of concerned about it, but he didn't say I couldn't. But um, I just was like looking at stuff as a sign that wasn't really a sign. Like, I was oh my like, gosh, oh, that's important. People are looking for those signs, anything. Oh, yeah, look. anything. Cause my credit, spot on the yeah, carpet. I lost my I'm credit card. I was like, it. this is it. That card's gonna expire. This isn't it, this isn't it. I shouldn't have done it, you know? And <laughs> at the end of the day, I should have just went with my gut. Cause my gut was like, do it. You know, you know, that's good because as you said, though, it reminds me just in general, I think in life, the way most people are, I'm not sure if it's the way we're wired, more so I think it's probably the way we're conditioned. We're always looking for a sign not to do something. Mm -hmm. When if you just flip it around to the other mindset, like how many times are we looking for a sign to actually do something? You know what I mean? Yeah. And, yeah. and, and most time we're looking like, especially I think when, and not just this situation, just situations in general, right? And especially when it's like something that's going to require um, some level of risk, something that we have some fear about, right? Fear of loss could be, hey, I'm gonna lose my time. I'm gonna lose my, like whatever like that. We're looking for like, hey, if you just give me like one sign, I ain't supposed to do this, right? Like, and like it was Ronnie's our first investment. I think that would have been my first big investment. And because we waited, we ended up getting used to investing and realizing mm. like, oh, this is great. Like, this is just what you do. And, and I didn't know, because when you're an, entre an employee, you don't pay people tens of thousands of dollars to give you advice. Like, you just, either your company does that or yeah. that's it. You don't invest in yourself at that level. Right. So I didn't know that that was normal. And then I started realizing every time I invested, I always made more money. I always learned something new. I always met someone new. So you mentioned, okay, we finally got you. Took a while, Ronnie. We finally got you into the mastermind. We made a way out of no way. Um, <laughs> then you came in, grew the business, got to seven figures and went to the collaborative. So for people that don't know, our mastermind is a 12 month mentorship and training program. We got experts, we got coaches, right? Built to get you from that six figure level to seven and then boom, yet seven. The collaborative is for companies do a minimum of seven figures, right? Million dollars per year in revenue and then being able to kind of go from there. 
for y'all, I want to ask you, like, what was it like to come in and then push towards that seven? Because y'all were very focused on like, hey, we want to, not everybody's as focused, y'all were, y'all were like, hey, we want to build a seven figure business. And y'all kind of came in and hit the ground running. Yeah, it was great. Um, I'll say for me, it was great to have community because Chris does not want to talk about business all the time unfortunately. So that meant I could talk about business all the time, 24 seven in the TSP mastermind group. And I basically did like, I came in and really chronicled our journey to a million in there and focused on launches. And I, I was um, telling someone recently, like when Ronnie outlined the project management process, like that made it so much. Cause I was like, Oh, this is how I get more people to do more stuff faster, you know? And so mm. like, for me, that really resonated and that helped us to launch one to two times a month over and over and over again. And every launch, whether it went good or went bad, we would do launch recaps in the mastermind group to show people what was really happening. And it was just so cool. Cause like people would be cheering if we did good, they'd be cheering if we did bad, it didn't matter. You know, like they were just there. And I think it was an extra level of accountability. And I would go in that portal and just do whatever it took. Mm -hmm. I was really there for the information. I'm like, okay, Lamar, has done these events, he's grown these events, we do events. Our first, our company started as an events company. So I'm like, that's what I wanna learn. I knew exactly what I wanted to learn, exactly what I wanted to do, and we did it. And it was it was really helpful, like I really liked it. When do you feel, a, was there a moment where you feel like you had like a, a, a breakthrough moment in the business? I think the breakthrough moment came, it came from uh, understanding, right? It, it wasn't necessarily a dollar amount. I remember we came to uh, before the before we joined the mastermind. We came to a challenge uh, webinar. Yep. We came to you know we came down to, to Atlanta, and we um, we ran our challenge the first the first time according to uh, the TSP model, and it wasn't even a hundred percent of what you all taught, but we implemented, and we made money. Yeah, ten thousand dollars. We made ten thousand dollars, which wasn't a lot, but what it showed us is that we have. We have some elements that we can add in and now we have a system and we kept running our system over and over and over. That was, I think that was one of the first breakthroughs. Once we got into the community, every time we came, we expanded our, we, we moved the goal. Mm. We expanded our, our uh, limitations, mm -hmm. right? Or we, we moved some limitations and we kept getting more, more and more stretch. Um, I believe that competition can be healthy in the right environments, but mm -hmm. I didn't come from a competitive background. She did. Mm -hmm. So what it did is it allowed us to get a competitive edge together. Mm -hmm. And now oh, every good. time we came to an event, it was like, okay, damn, we're going, we're going harder. We're going harder. We're going to, uh, we're going to have, at first it was like, yeah, we want 50 people in the room. Then it was like 75, hundred, 200, 300. So every time we got around other winners, we wanted to win more and we implemented the way we wanted to win. I love that. Getting around other winners, right? Yeah. And just seeing what is possible. Like, why not me? They're doing it. So I love that. And that, and that challenge y'all did, that first one that popped, that wasn't your first challenge. You did one before, right? No, we had done um, only paid challenges. So that was, and I think Chris is spot on. Like, the difference was the understanding. Because I was always under the mindset of, like, nothing can be free. And when I met you and started listening to your teaching, you were like, well... If you do a free challenge, you actually make more money. Here's how, you know? And that really shifted my mindset because our challenges before that were doing like $1,400, $1,500. We've always made a bulk of our money from our live events, but this allowed us to have a system to make money, more money in between just a live event. And it didn't matter if we made all our money at live events because I had a law firm that did really well. So it was like, all right, cool, this event, end of the year, focus on that. Law firm all year, focus on that. And so, it was really, um, it was really good. It was really good. That was a big shift for us. It's like doing the free challenge model, um, but it producing more money. And now, you know, our average launches are anywhere from sixty thousand to we've had seven figure launches. And that just was not, um, that wasn't really in the cards for us with with us only launching at the event at the end of the year. Mm, so good, so good. And I will say this to everybody, right? Y'all are probably two of the highest level implementers I've seen, right? Because because you know. You can get knowledge, you can get understanding without the actual execution of doing the things. I wanted to make sure, like, I don't know, Ronnie, if everybody caught yeah. that, they mentioned, hey, like, we launched. And Chris said, like, we did it again. And we did it again. And I feel like that do it again piece is what most people miss. And you said it. And I'm always, when people ask me about your stuff, I'm just like, he said, do this. He said, do that. Like, I, when we went to the challenge class, Chris will tell you, I studied everything that you gave us beforehand. I was like, 
He says we're supposed to watch this, and then at the event we get to ask all these questions. <laughs> and then I'm, at, I'm there, and I'm like, Chris, these folks ain't watch this stuff. I could tell by these questions. <laughs> and he was like, told you that everybody wasn't gonna sit there and study, watch all that stuff. I'm like, this is messing up my questions. <laughs> Somebody there like, what exactly is a challenge? Right. I'm like, we I'm like, that, that in the first. I told that in that. the first thirty seconds of the course, Jack. This is exactly what we're not supposed to be doing in here. Right. We're supposed to be doing some advanced strategies. Exactly. So another point is. Uh, what TSP really meant for us was twofold. For Ashley, it was community, right? Mm -hmm. She was already running the business before I joined. She couldn't slow down and stop to teach me what a challenge was, what a webinar is. But it allowed TSP, uh, the mastermind, allowed me to have to go to a place, watch some videos, and get get caught up to speed. Oh, that's good. So I was able to then now understand everything that she had been talking about, but I, I knew exactly what she was what she was talking about. And if I didn't, I could just go back, watch the video, and then I can get get on, on par. And so that helped that helped our business to just move faster. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and talking about moving fast, congratulations, guys. You guys just hit the Inc. 5000 list, one yes. of the country's fastest growing privately held companies and a high ranking. Like, what was that number? Yeah, we were number 370 out of 5,000 companies in America. And then I think four 14th fastest growing company in Georgia. Wow, right? Like who would have saw that in the cards? I know, yeah. it was on our vision board in 2018, but I remember yeah. putting it on there and being like, yeah, this feels like a stretch. Like, <laughs> like you're supposed to put big goals on here. There we go. Like, I didn't even know what it took to get on it. But yeah, so that was that was a big goal of ours. So I was really excited about that. And from growing the company from where you talked about to where it is, also another part of that growth, like Chris, now you're actually in the business full time as well, director of sales. Like, like, how does that, was that something that y'all always thought about? If y'all did, was Chris, did you like one day, I'm being there full time, I'm be running the sales, nah. closing people. <laughs> it was quite the opposite. <laughs> I was like, I told her I would never work in a company with you. Mm -hmm. because yeah, that is the opposite. That is quite, the, quite opposite. the opposite. <laughs> but I know she, she thought about it a lot. And yeah. uh, really, uh, we had to pivot during the, uh, the pandemic. During the pandemic, uh, like I said, I'm more of a, a relational one to one small groups, and that was that's what my 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 job was in education. Uh, pandemic, all of the schools shut down. We were all virtual. Um, we had just had our you know welcome our, our new baby, and so everything was different. And I wasn't able to show up to work my best self on a screen, and so I had to pivot in my professional career. At the same time, um, Ashley was saying I need I need help in the business because we're doing I'm doing things that. That, that are new to me. And so uh, it, it was the perfect time for us to to shift and me make that pivot and to join full time. So uh, then it became of, okay, so then now I'm here full time, what do I do? I love it. Now tell the people in case they don't know, like what is the core focus in the way that Speak Your Way to Cash helps your clients? Yeah, so we're basically a direct sales training company. Our clients are all experts who want to sell directly to corporations or they wanna to sell to smaller companies, but they want to use direct outreach. So cold emailing, direct pitching, that's like the core of what we do in our mastermind level programs and licensing. So sophisticated offers to sophisticated buyers and teaching them how to make that process work. Mm, very good. And with this, right, um, you know, we've been shooting different episodes and having these conversations. One of the things we've been talking about is along with the pivots, like sometimes it's um, organizational operational pivots sometimes like we have to pivot because the business ain't making the money it should make right the business is going wrong with you guys what are some moments where you say like hey you know what whether you wanted to or not like we had to make some strong pivots in the business there have been a lot of moments like that I mean you know just this week we had our email server got blacklisted like the IP address got blacklisted mm -hmm. meaning our email deliverability went from like 30 to 50% open rate to 7% open rate wow. and we make a ton of money from emails. Like a large percentage of our revenue comes directly from emails. We send out emails every day. Um, and so we had to pivot. We had to hyper segment our list, start using text message marketing, start running warm ads. Then our ads got blacklisted like the same week. Oh, wow. Wow. People were reporting our ads. We probably lost like 100K in like one month. We did a huge launch, spent a lot of money on it. And just, um, it did not perform. And it was really, it's hard because it's like right before an event, but the great thing is it got us thinking. So we started meeting with all this new tech. Our team started doing um, cold, like not cold, but they started doing um, phone calls. Mm -hmm. So every day, every member of our team started calling people, texting people, following up, 
We recouped a lot of those sales on the phone. People just had to do one-to-one -one outreach. We worked with some cold email providers to send out emails. Like we did not slow down. We had to plan another launch on top of the launch we had. I'm doing an in-person event in Atlanta. Um, we found a library that would give us free space. Like we did whatever yeah. it took. And I think that was just a pivot. We put our stuff on Eventbrite because we were testing our landing pages. Mm -hmm. We found out Eventbrite had a higher conversion rate, lower cost per lead. We reran all of the ads, um, got them back up and running. So that was a big pivot. You know, we were only selling our mastermind program. Well, we realized out of 56,000 on our email list, we had sold to about 8,000 of them. But like, how do we get that other 40 plus thousand people to move? Well, we need a membership. So we launched the Pitch Your Way to Cash membership, which only covers one thing. We've never had an offer where it was like, all we cover is pitching. It was just like how to pitch the colleges, how to pitch the corporations, how to mm. pitch the organizations. And it was a lower ticket offer. We never sold anything for like 300 bucks a month. Um, but it's done so well. People were able to get results. And it, it allowed us to have the halo that you talk about, that high and low ticket it's offer. Up. And it was the perfect time because a lot of people were experiencing layoffs. And a lot of our audience has jobs, like day jobs. So we realized that we had to pivot again. So. There have been, there's, there'll probably be a pivot tomorrow. We had a baby, big pivot. Right. Like, we, <laughs> big yeah. pivot, like having a baby. We is moved, a huge moved pivot. from Chicago. Yeah, moved yeah. from Chicago. Moved from Chicago. That was definitely yeah, that was with a, huge a baby, pivot. meaning no grandmas yeah. to watch the baby. Yeah. Like, None. <laughs> huge pivot. So, yeah, we just, you know, we do what it takes. I think once you decide this is the business I'm going to run, I don't have a job to go back to, I provide the jobs. <laughs> like, I don't have the job. So, at that point, it's like, we cannot lose. And I have to just convey that to my team um, and to my clients and my customers. And every time it happens, instead of being like, oh, this is so sad, woe is me. It's like, all right, I tell my customers like, hey, this is what's going on. This is what we're doing differently. And this is what it looks like to not give up. So Ashley, you all are so successful. And sometimes that makes you a target. And sometimes it you receive hate, like from people online, maybe from clients. How ha what, ha what has happened and how have you dealt with that? I mean, there's always stuff happening. I think um, for me, one of the ways that I have used the collaborative is I ask Lamar what is normal. Cause I don't necessarily know what's normal. So our first mastermind launched with like a, over a hundred members. That was our first um, mastermind. And it was, we had another coaching program, probably like 25, 30 people, tw six months. But our first one launched, we have 110 clients within like a couple months of it launching. And so just managing that many people and their emotions and their expectations, I think what I was not prepared for was that people don't really hire you as their business coach. Sometimes they think they're hiring a life guide. Mm -hmm. So they want you to be far more than a business coach. They want you to be their pastor, their sister. I've had women say, you're like a mom, like all of these things. And, um, you know, I only have one daughter. <laughs> so <laughs> it was just unexpected. So we've definitely had some backlash, some... I think it really all boils down to people don't give leaders grace. Um, and so when I've had missteps, people have been way more vicious than I anticipated. Like we had, a, um, we actually had a client that like blasted us on social media because we wouldn't give her a refund. And it was, it was totally unexpected, but it, it was also like, I'm not going to be bullied or manipulated. Like it was one of those, if you don't give me a refund, I'm going to tell people, you know, you had a mental breakdown at your event. I was like, no, 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 I'm going to tell people on mm. my YouTube <laughs> what happened to me. But I think I responded to the email was like, do your worst, you know? And then the next day she like blasted me on Facebook. I'm like, this isn't even that bad. Team screenshot, <laughs> like team screenshotted it. We had to uh, do an arbitration because I am a lawyer. I don't know why people think that I'm a fake lawyer. I don't play one on TV. I live one in real life. Mm. So we filed an arbitration, got a preliminary injunction. It was down in a couple days. And I think that, you know, it was all such a blessing in the end because it just showed me what people who say they love you are capable of. Mm. Because there's times in this industry where you'll think like, oh, everyone's saying they love me. So that must mean that they actually do. And it just reminded me who really loves you is your family. Like, don't let that slip. Who really loves you are people who genuinely know you, whether you're up or you're down. So we've dealt with little things like that. Um, but we haven't had, we've, we've had some issues. That's like one that's one big issue I can think of, of like, like we've had over 7,500 customers. So for the most part, our community is really, really good. I just wasn't always ex prepared for some of the cattiness that kind of can come with serving a large group. But 
I remember it from ministry. I just didn't think I'd deal with it over on the business side. Because yeah. right. law is pretty, it's pretty black and white. Like, I've never had a corporate client call me like, Ashley, I didn't like that post. Was that about me? Like, it's just not <laughs> something that happens. So, right. like, on this side, you just got to be more careful and know that you are serving people and all of their emotions they bring with them to coaching. Right. You know, that that's um, good. And it's, it's impactful because I think you said something, right, where you have to remember all of the good you're doing. And you yeah. have to remember all the people that appreciate it, right? Like for every one person that doesn't appreciate it, for every one person that tries to get away or that tries to scam or that tries to, you know, do something crazy, right? And a lot of times it's, it's not the person that you don't have relation with. A lot of times it's the people closer to you yeah. where you've done the extra stuff you initially have to do or that you said you weren't going to do or that you shouldn't have done, right? Like a lot of times it's literally the people that you're doing all the extra stuff with and that's, and that's why it hurts because it blows you away like, you know, I had people say stuff, and I'm like, "You, I know. you know what I'm saying?" Like, but that's why I shouldn't. You the one I did. Too. I yeah. did the extra thing for you. <laughs> yeah, I I was hitting up and doing the extra. Yeah, that is not in the contract, but I was yep. doing that. You, I gave the opportunities to that people would love to have. Yeah, and now out of everybody to be questioned, I'm being questioned by you. And it seemed to me like we. And that's been the issue with um, like putting people on our stage. Like I didn't realize that for some people getting on someone's stage, like it really goes to their heads in a way that is just unanticipated. We do this event every year. I know I'm gonna get on at least my stage every year. So I don't gotta cut up <laughs> or act out or act like, oh my gosh, like this is gonna happen because I'm gonna pay for making it happen. So it's like, for some people, that's the first time they've been on a stage or people right. have looked at them like that and they just are like, this is it. I can do this on my own. I don't need this lady. I'm about to slander her name. And I think for me, sometimes it's just the speed. Like 24 hours later, you'll say that about me. You know, I think I wasn't expecting that. Chris definitely was expecting that. Like he, because he did ministry. He was going to dedicate his life to ministry. So when this happened and when we had some clients that were doing some backlash stuff and just saying things after we had helped them make so much money and do so well, Chris was the one who was like, I told you, this is how people are. Like, this is why I didn't want you getting this close. This is why I said, do not let people in our personal space. This is why, this is why Chris was trying to have, help me to have boundaries. Uh -huh. And I think that like, but for something happening that was so egregious, I don't think I would have known why you all have the boundaries you have or why we are supposed to have the boundaries you're supposed to have. Ronnie and I have talked about boundaries. Mm -hmm. So I think it was a really good lesson before we continue to grow. Cause th none of that stopped anything for us. You know what I mean? Like no, no drama can stop what we're called to do. And so just keeping that in mind, it was a great, great, great lesson I could not have bought in why you have the boundaries that you have and why leaders have to have some separation between what they do and who they are in their personal space. That's good. But if you don't mind, I got to ask Chris this, when Ashley is going through those things, cause she's kind of the face of the brand. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, like crazy stuff is going to happen. It's going to be directed at, or, you know, people, they don't really, well, they talk crazy about Ronnie a little bit. Um, I was going to say, they don't talk crazy about Ronnie. They do a little bit. But, you know, most of the crazy talk is <laughs> directed towards me. I yeah, I just don't even tell her. I'll be like, hey, just don't tell keep <laughs> slide your phone past right, that, right, right. that one right there. <laughs> um, but as a husband, right, it's a little bit different, I feel like. Like, what are you going, when you see people, if they attack Ashley, or they saying stuff about her, right? Because you're not just seeing what they're saying. You're seeing how it's impacting her. Yeah at home, which nobody else sees that version of Ashley, but you, like as a husband, how does that feel? And how do you, you know, process that? The way I process it is like, I think, um, I'm like, all oh, this could be over. <laughs> like there are, and we say this often, there are easier ways to make money that we know of, that we've done before, Yeah. right? And so it is, it almost seems, it seems like um, sometimes when we serve, when you serve people, you believe uh, that people are going to uh, appreciate what you do for them. Um, but betrayal is illogical. Mm. All betrayal is illogical. Mm. It, it just doesn't make sense. And we try to make sense of it, and then that's when we get caught up. And so uh, what I see at home is I'm, I'm always trying to protect Ashley from making decisions that will allow people to come in and, and, and plant a seed. Because we're, talking, we're not talking about people who were – you know, already just, just they're just in the community. We're talking about people who one day said, I'm gonna be with you forever. We helped them grow their business. And now the next day, the moment something happens where uh Ashley is now off the pedestal that they put her on, it is, oh, you're the worst person 
ever, right? And so these are people that we, we, we labor with. And so what, for me, it's like, I'm looking at her like, oh no, we can go back to law. Like, we don't got to do this. <laughs> like we can, we can do something else. We can serve other people. Um, we can do something different. And so um, for me, it, it's more difficult for me to look at her and be like, we should continue doing this. Mm. It is like I've had I was the one like when I re <laughs> when we saw like a, a small faction of people saying negative things who we knew not because I always get trolled because I'll say stuff and it'll go viral and then I get trolled in the comments. I think that's actually funny. I always tell Chris, I'm getting negative comments. This means it's about to go viral. Mm. Like it's not going viral to the negative Nancy's and negative Nate's come they when they come. It. They're going to mm. help it. I'm like, let them argue. Let them fight, you know. But when it's people you know, I think I think what he said about betrayal being illogical is so good. But also, I never want to make a decision on a bad day. Another thing I learned from law, I had a partner and I was having such a hard time. I was working 20 hour days for like weeks on a trial. And I was like, I don't know if I could do this. And he was like, yeah, maybe you can, maybe you can't, but you can't quit on a bad day. And you mm -hmm. need to always evaluate your life in six month periods. And he was like, if, if you can look back six months and it really isn't worth it, then you may want to make a shift. But he was like, you can't do it. And when I looked at six months, and all that we had accomplished and everything we'd done, I was like, I really do love this. I love our clients. We can't let negative people rob us of all of the positivity that we're doing, because if we do, then we're letting the people who think the worst of us and our mission decide how impactful this mission will be for the best of our clients. And that's not fair to them. So I had to get Chris back on, because he definitely was like, yeah, I was done. <laughs> she was like, cool, so we taking legal clients? Like, because <laughs> like he was definitely done. So we went, we did a sabbatical. It was life changing. Um, we prayed, we paused. Our team was just amazing. I really love our operations manager. She was just like, hey, I'll, I'll hold it down. You know, we enrolled so many great, amazing new clients um, who were who were just what I needed. I feel like the clients we enrolled after this happen were just like the perfect clients that I needed to just heal and like serve them and see appreciation in real time. And so I'm really glad we didn't quit on a bad day, you know? Huh. Ronnie, you never want to quit before, have you? You mean today? <laughs> <laughs> I can't talk about yesterday. You know? I, I, I was, and, and this is real, right? I want to have this conversation um, because oftentimes people don't understand the burden of leadership, right? And the burden of mm -hmm. entrepreneurship. It looks so, so glammed up online. But you know, uh, uh, maybe last year at some point, I kept telling the mastermind, yeah, you know, in the future, it may not be a mastermind. Blah, blah. And one day one of the clients said, okay, you didn't say that too many times. Yeah. Man. Like cut it out, <laughs> right. it's gonna be a mastermind because right. I intend on being here, like like stop yeah. saying that, right? But really the burden and all the things that come with it. So I wanna thank y'all for just being also open, honest and transparent in the conversation today. I do wanna ask you, right? What is next for Speak Your Way to Cash? Man, it's so much. So I think one of the things that we've loved is creating content, but story content. So this mm. year we did more like mini movies to promote our event and it's a superhero theme. And we actually have been using the same actresses from our community. So we want to do more of that. We've been studying models of, um, I don't know if you know the, uh, oh, I can't think of their names, but there's, we want to create more storytelling in our business to teach concepts in visual stories. We wanna do more movies, short films. We're going to do more trainings, um, but not just for our clients, but we wanna also train and certify pitch masters, people that they can actually hire to pitch for them. And we're gonna certify our clients in our signature speeches so that they can then go out and deliver those talks. So we're really looking into certification. We're looking into partnerships with companies locally even that will hire from our community. So at our next event, we'll be having corporate buyers come in and actually hear pitches from our clients, which is great. So we're looking at big partnerships, collaborations, continuing to elevate the way that we serve our clients and just also look at some offshoot businesses to speak your way to cash. And we're looking at how we can reincorporate the law back into how we serve our clients. I love it. Thank y'all so much for joining us today. We appreciate y'all. Yes, we do. All right. And I want to thank everybody there for watching along with us. So many pivots in today's conversation. But guess what? If we can pivot through it, if the Kirkwoods can pivot through it, and we can all get to a better place, you can too. Hey, um, I told you, I promise y'all, Ronnie was going to answer this correctly. Ronnie, what percentage of businesses are run by couples in the United States? 10%. Okay. Ronnie saw the car before we started. I did um, not. Yes. Okay. Um, that's, <laughs> that's the first one you got right. It's because you already saw the car. But I so want to thank be everybody. Wrong all the time. 
let's move on. I want to thank everybody <laughs> for watching us today. Hey, scroll down in the description, right? We got links to Speak Your Way to Cash, more information about the Kirkwoods. You can follow them, follow their movement, um, learn what they're doing, the amazing things and the events that they have coming up. And we also want to tell you, make sure you subscribe, right? Right here to this channel, The Convo on YouTube. And we want to make sure you are subscribing and watching and notifications on for every single episode of The Pivot Point. Ronnie, take us out. What does that mean? I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> da, 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 out. We're done. Is that right, it? There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. It's getting wild. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs>